Excuse now me. it's time for Girl, Your Soul is Speaking. And welcome back to On Air with Tony Sweet for the segment Girl. Your soul is speaking. Okay. Okay. All okay. Right. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm here with Tony Sweet. That's me. I'm here with Jasper Cole. Mm-hmm. And today we're going to talk about designing your creative destiny just a little Ooh. bit, which is fun because we're surrounded by creative artistic energy. And now you know I'm talking about you, Jasper. Allegedly. Yeah, he wasn't looking <laughs> well, at me. He wasn't looking at me. I was me. like, okay. He's looking at you. <laughs> well, I, That's code for bipolar? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Actor. Actor. Oh, same yes. thing. Do you sing too? No. Is that, I, is that good? Yeah, I want to sing, but I can't. Ralph sings for him. Tone deaf. Okay. Oh, Ralph sings for the world. <laughs> Ralph's, God, Ralph's gotten too many plugs today. Yeah, yeah bless yeah. his heart. I work alone. We'll take away his orange. Yeah. <laughs> oh, orange. 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 Sorry. Um, so this is designing your creative destiny. So you're very, very creative as the owner of UBNRadio.com. Well, thank you. Yes, I am. And one of the things that we have to do as creative people is constantly prepare, pretend, prepave. Pretend a lot. Yeah, you, you really do have to pretend. And what do most people pretend? They pretend what they don't want versus what they do want. And I love to say that every human lives either above the line or below the line. So everything on the line is vanilla, which, hello, I like that with cake. So everything is vanilla right in the middle. It's complacent. You're not happy. You're not sad. You're not bored. It just is what it is, yet there's no movement there. And everything above the line is rich, prosperous, happy, connected, high frequency, and opulent, which is what we want all the time. And everything below the line feels negative, poverty, poor, and just crappy. And... The reason I love artists and dancers and singers and actors so much is because we spend a lot of time in our imagination. And as a psychic, I know you have to have a really, really good imagination to be able to hear what your intuition is saying to you. So you have great gut instinct, Tony. (coughs) And then you, Jasper, have to have great gut instinct, too, and essentially use your imagination to channel certain characters that you bring to the stage. Mm. And the screen, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're prepaving, pretending, and acting as if in your daily life, not as an actor, not as an owner of the station, are you mostly above the line or mostly below the line in your thoughts? In my daily life? In your daily life. Oh, way above the line. Yeah. And why, why are you there? And how long did it take you to get there and stay there? Oh, it's it's been a process, yeah. but I, I I often make the comment I wish I could be in my professional life where I've gotten to in, in my personal life, you know men, yeah. what we're above the line because th- I think as actors we self doubt we we second guess our you know what I mean we sort of play those games with ourselves mm-hmm. so I'm trying to trying to get that get the personal uh, the personal and the professional in the same above the line that's good and there's a lot of people who um who are famous that want their relationships to be as good as their career and if their career is great uh, and then their relationship is great then they want their money <laughs> to be great and then if their money is great then the relationship isn't Isn't it interesting right. how it sort of because you see those performers too that their per, their their professional life is through the roof yes and yet the personal life and I, I just feel like now at this age, I, 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 I'm much more, I want the personal life to be really solid yeah. because that's what's most important. And it feeds the professional it life. Is because you might be at work for eight hours. The rest of the time you're going to be in your sanctuary, which I've been to your home. It's beautiful. Thank you. And it's peaceful. And you've got a good energy there. And you got little fairies in your garden. I remember that. Mm-hmm. I think one of them snatched a leg out from under a chair when we were filming <laughs> something one day. Okay. 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 So it was a metal t- chair, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they carved it out of a locomotive from the 1850s. Right. Yeah, that's what I heard. Sort of like that. A big caboose <laughs> was sitting yeah. in it. <laughs> woo, woo. Woo, woo. So we're talking about designing it, your great... <laughs> I love Sheena Easton. Morning, L train, leaving on the train. What was it saying? I'm sorry, I digress. No, no, what was her well, it was song she, about trains? I'm, uh, oh, uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> to, to the morning train. The morning train, which I think is a metaphor for something totally different. <laughs> I you don't. had to be because there because she went right into Sugar Walls after that. Right. Oh. 
Oh, Prince wrote that. Yeah. Oh, that's allegedly right. Prince had a little thing for her. Speaking oh. of pre-paving, oh god. All right, <laughs> Sheena Easton. So, do you ever have to go to auditions? Oh, I have to audition. And have you ever done auditions? Uh, unfortunately, yes. Yeah. And so, <laughs> what arrives to your audition first, guys? Your thoughts about the audition or your physical body? My physical body, like my. Oh, my, my thoughts son. about it. Yeah. Thoughts. Thoughts. The thoughts always arrive to your audition, to your job interview, to your rehearsal space, to on air with Tony Sweet. Your thoughts always arrive first. Which arrives first, your feelings <laughs> or your body? Feelings. feelings. Your thoughts arrive first, your feelings arrive with it, and then your body walks into the room later. Which arrives first, your imagination or your body? Imagination. Your pretending or your body? Pretending. You're acting as if or your body? As if. Daydreaming or your body? Daydreaming. <laughs> anxiety or your body? Oh, anxiety. So what do <laughs> most like, oh, people... I mean... I, yeah. So oh, what do anxiety. a lot of people do whenever they're going on auditions, job interviews, or certain things? Which arrives first? Their thoughts and their feelings and the way they feel about it above the line and sometimes below the line. So I have an audition Monday and I'm really excited about it. Luckily, I'm not nervous <clears> about <throat> it yet. So all of the energy that's already at my Monday at 2 p.m. audition in New York is high, 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 fast and pure. Which is good. It is really good. And so the goal is to keep all of my thoughts to about stay there, the right? audition in that high above the line place for the fun of it. It's not when we get into the make it or break it stage, mm -hmm. that's where we start watering down our energy. Or whenever you're sending the what you do want and don't want energy simultaneously, it starts being that push pull paralysis. Right. And so step one is always have a pure intention so you can nail your audition. Oh God. Oh God. Right. Thank that's you. That's what I'm saying. Your intention always the audition. And do, can I say also yes. that uh, that a lot of times I've gotten to the point where I realize you can nail the audition and not get the job. That's right. You know, that the whole point is about there's so much out of our hands about actually landing the job, but nailing mm. the audition is what you can all you can really do. That's right. right. Is that satisfying for you as an actor knowing that you nailed it and, and even though you don't get it, do you still go, I did a damn good job? Well, I can only say this when you have a body of work now behind you. Mm hmm. I can say that because mm -hmm. then I figure they know what I do. It's just not my day. But when you're coming up and you don't have the body of work oh, yet, like, you take every audition <laughs> personal or okay. you try. It's hard not to because you don't understand. It's not about <clears throat> just doing a great audition. And time really is a important factor here in that I've been doing readings for 25 years. So if someone it leaves and they don't go, oh, my God, that was the best reading I've ever had. I know in my heart, in my mind, in my gut that I gave a hundred percent. Right. Period. And so I won't do it if I can't give a hundred percent. And it's the same with the auditions. And years later, after you've had X number of auditions, hundreds, sometimes thousands, you walk away, you like, I know I nailed it and I'm free because I know that I nailed it. Right. I feel good about it and I know I totally just left my essence in that room. And then if we don't ever hear from them, and if you don't get the part, it doesn't mean anything. No. It means, was that wasted time? No. no. Was it wasted energy? No. no. Was it wasted frequency? Mm -hmm. No. Was it above the line? Ooh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and so where does that energy go? It goes to every other area of your life, the personal life, sitting in traffic on the 405 and that sort of thing. So all of that energy that we purposefully use to stay above the line not only helps our auditions and interviews and everything like that, it helps every single area of our life if we'll just remember it. Step two in designing your creative destiny is come from your heart and you'll win the part. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get in their head for some reason because mm -hmm. we create our lives from the inside out. Right. Everything we think think is projected forward and it's going to meet us in the future and so if you're coming from your heart i like to say it's your heart mind and whenever you go in and you're tuning into your character or you've got an important business meeting or whatever it is i always i'll make a list of the 10 things that i want to feel i call it think it and ink it mm -hmm. and if i just think it it's like a fart in a whirlwind thought and if i write it down i'm summoning that energy that creates worlds, that's high frequency, that's opulent, that feels like my essence, the purest part of me, our higher self. Right. And whenever I 
spend time and energy on that, then I, I do get the part. And it's what you said, even if I don't get that part contractually, mm-hmm. I know I nailed the part. Right, right. And I walk away from that feeling really good. And again, it's really about freedom, freeing your mind up a little bit right? so that you don't do the push-pull. Do you have a technique that you use where you, you're not in the push-pull thing when you're going into auditions? Well, this where I've come to in my career now is I do this thing where I actually think I'm shooting the job. When oh, I acting is when I the go end my whole my whole career has been acting as if Me because too. I wasn't really trained and you know so I just but no I go in now as if I'm shooting it yes they've just mm. they chose the they result. chose to cut me out but that way I don't feel like I'm auditioning <laughs> I actually feel like I'm doing the job right then and so for whatever reason they didn't use it or they cut it out or whatever but hmm. then I don't I'm completely off book I'm ready to go as if as if we're shooting that day. Yeah, and you're showing up in that prepared state right. of consciousness, yes. which is a mind, body, spirit thing, and your heart is full. And it keeps coming back. I can feel this theme with you guys is freedom today. And so if you can go in, whether you get the part or not, you're free because you did your best. Right. And you're not using that as some little pacifying thing. <clears throat> oh, I did my best. Not yeah, anymore. Let me eat a pie. I used to. <laughs> I mean, I have I been to. in that place. Me too. But I think it comes with. Age. age and experience Ex- right i think experience yeah it, whether it's age or not because some people because people are, yeah get it younger and some don't ever get it yeah right? like eric stultz we're talking about him earlier today mm-hmm. for the uh in the movie that he's doing <clears throat> he's been doing it since he was a kid kid yeah and i loved what she was saying about how he was involved in all the aspects of it because he loves it that much right step three is tag the greatest moments of your auditions, of your interviews, and in your previous auditions, jobs, rehearsal space, and anything that you did what you love because then you're going to attract more. And TAG is an acronym for Thanksgiving, Appreciation, and Gratitude. Hmm. So when you're thankful for step one and you're appreciative for step two, when you're in step three, you're only triple amplifying what you've already established so that you're telling the universe you want more, more, more of the exact same thing that's above the line in every area of your life, not just that one area, all areas of your life. So recapping, designing your creative destiny. Step one is pure intention can nail your audition. And step two is come from your heart and win the part. And step three is tag the greatest moment so that you keep magnetizing more of the same. And remember, anything you do when you're feeling good is going to all areas of your life if you will allow it mm-hmm. by not accidentally push pulling it. And that was our little segment of wow. Girl, Your Soul is Speaking. Isn't that great? Wow. That's great. How much do we owe you?